Police in Lagos discover shrine of dreaded Badu cult, just as five gangs of suspected kidnappers along Abuja Kaduna Expressway smashed. Acting President on Regional Cooperation in Dealing with Insurgency as AU Peace and Security Council visits. When you look at all these um, different legislation, you begin to say, definitely we, we, will have, we will have made an impact. Seek to strengthen the legislature. That's what the Senate President advocates. Good evening and welcome to NTA Network News. I am Kirian Umayo. In Lagos is Ademola Adewe. And in Jos is Mariam Adura. Thank you for joining us tonight on the news. After five agonizing years for parents of four students of the University of Port Harcourt who were publicly burnt to death after being falsely accused, justice has been served with three of the accused persons sentenced to death. Kingsley Amaju reports that Justice Letam Nodek of Port Harcourt High Court handed down the judgment and acquitted four others. It is about five years since the Isle of Four incident where four of the University of Potato students were killed in a mob action. A River State High Court sitting in Potato found three of the accused persons guilty of the offense and therefore sentenced them to death. However, four of those standing trial were discharged and acquitted. Ugona, Obuzo, Toko Lloyd, Chiadeka, Baringa and Tekena Erkana we are lynched after they were falsely accused of theft in Alo community in a case that went viral in the social media. In this case, only three were convicted. That's okay. I am partially satisfied. But we are happy that uh, the three of them, too, who were convicted today, justice has been done, including the sergeant at law. We have uh, more time to look into the decision, and uh, probably we are going to appeal on it. The judge chided the police and the other security agencies for failing in their responsibility to rescue the victims who were accused of theft, stressing that the sentencing of the police sergeant should serve as a lesson to others. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amadri, NTA News. The police have discovered one of the most dreaded shrines said to be the powerhouse of the most wanted ritualist group, Badu. Badu gang has been terrorizing Ikorudu and its environs. The discovery was made during a tactical raid of a joint intelligence squad led by the Deputy Commissioner of Police Operations, Imohimi Edgar, in Lagos. Doing Dia reports. It was a long trek from the main town of Agboa, a rural community in Agboa Ikosi Local Council Development Area. Finally, we arrived at the location, a deadly shrine which is surrounded by thick forest. One after the other, the squad led us into the rooms which was filled with ritual items. The smell of fresh blood and decomposing bodies filled the rooms. The prime suspect, Alaji Alaka Bayomi, is said to be the owner of the dreaded shrine. He later led the security team to another hideout in the forest where his suspects are kept. It's, um, it's a shrine, one of the most dreadest shrines uh, patronized by a cross section of um, ritualists, including the infamous Bado group. The uh, owner of the um, shrine, uh, who is an independent uh, oil marketer on um, Alaji uh, Abayomi, uh, has been arrested in connection with uh, the heinous uh, killing of uh, uh, a husband, wife, and daughters um, at uh, Ipakudu uh, over the weekend. So we have other leads and other areas. We are investigating them. We will not spare anybody, no matter how highly pleased, if you are connected with this crime. The police also arrested three suspects in connection with the mother of a family of four in Okiota community in Ibishi area of Ikorodu over the weekend in Lagos doing DIA NT News. 
A seal on security matters about five different gangs of suspected kidnappers terrorizing motorists along Abuja Kaduna Expressway have been cracked in some hideouts and villages in Kaduna State by the Nigerian police force, resulting in 31 arrests. Parading the suspects before newsmen in Rijana village in Kaduna State, the police public relations officer, Jimo Mushud, said 18 of the suspects have confessed to the crime. While investigations continue, Ronke Kolaole reports. Worried about the unabated attacks by kidnappers and armed robbers along the Abuja Kaduna Expressway, the Inspector General of Police Ibrahim Idris had, on the 25th of this month, launched Operation Absolute Sanity to complement existing police military operations. Just a week into its launch, the operation has started yielding results. The first public relations officer, Jima Mashud, said the police will build on this success and replicate the operation in all major highways across the nation. This joint team are a strat force team. The police visibility patrol, police stop and search, and other police crime prevention strategies are deployed along the highway and they are working. But this to ensure that we move them, arrest them in their hideout wherever they are located on this highway. The first spokesman commended the communities where the suspects were smoked out for giving all necessary information and pledged that the police will continue to be proactive in crime prevention and control. The communities call for more protection as they continue to boost the fight against crime. Our prayers is being answered that we see the, the federal government of Nigeria is now taking action on it. So we, we are appreciating your efforts. This is the second major breakthrough by the Nigerian police force in smashing kidnapping gangs operating in Rijana and other villages in Kaduna. The first was in June this year. Runke Kolawoli, NT News. Acting President Yemi Shibajo says that the country has worked well together with other countries in the Lake Chad Basin region in dealing decisively with the terrorist insurgency as well as the consequent humanitarian services. This was while receiving a delegation of the African Union Peace and Security Council on the last leg of visits to countries in the region on a fact-finding mission on the crisis. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports. Acting President Yemi Oshimbajo explained that the multinational joint task force, after overcoming the initial teething challenges, has succeeded in its operations, working together effectively to address the terrorist insurgency. The acting president said the Buhari administration is extremely pleased with what has been seen and would like to see more of such cooperation. Humanitarian consequences of the insurgency, he observed, still remains a huge challenge. Acting President Oshimbajo committed to the Peace and Security Council and urging it to look at other issues for a secured future for the generations to come. The delegation was led by its chairperson for the month of July, Ambassador Bankole Adoye, who is also Nigerian's ambassador to Ethiopia and the African Union. Oh, we saw. Uh, the humanitarian situation at first hand. We assessed the needs of the internally displaced persons. In a place called Difa, which is in, in, in the Republic of Niger, we saw them also in Bakasi, in Madiguri, and we can see that peace is gradually returning. We need to thank our the gallantry and appreciate the gallantry of our, of our armed forces, not only of Nigeria, but the, but the three other countries of the Lake Chad Basin and, and Benin Republic, for the good record they, are, they have uh, achieved. The, the, the omnibus organizational structure put in place in Maiduguri called the Operation Safe Corridor. And it's a combination of um, prosecuting the war in the theater and humanitarian aspects and also DDR program. This is, it shows the mastery on the part of the Nigerian military in uh, quelling um, insurgency and re rebellions in other parts of the world. During the month of July, Nigeria, as chair of the council, has championed issues of finding peace and security to areas of conflict and countries where there were political umpires, including Guinea-Bissau, Somalia, as well as issues that relate to free movement, child soldiering, security impediments, and out-of-school children. In the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News.
And more on security issues, Nigerian government and the multinational joint tax force have been commended for ensuring that peace returns to the African region. A delegation of the African Union Peace and Security Council made the commendation at a ministerial roundtable with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyama. Basi Taiban tells us more. African Union delegation, which is on a tour of the African region, to have a first-hand knowledge of the havoc wrecked by terrorism, said they are impressed that peace is gradually returning to the northeastern states of the country. They reiterated AU's support to the fight against terrorism in the African region. But today we know that Boko Haram is being decimated, is being degraded, and the challenges are now better known to us. The Minister of Foreign Affairs noted that terrorism is not a local issue, but global, and acknowledged AU's effort at assisting in the fight. And, you know, we have to uh, work together, and it's absolutely important that our regional body, the African Union, uh, should be uh, fully you know, engaged, and we appreciate that, uh, that engagement. The issue of child trafficking came to the fore. Basi Taipan, NTA News. The National Assembly, as Nigeria's apex parliament, is the single distinguishing institution between dictatorship and a democracy. Nigeria's Senate President, Dr. Abubakar Bukola Saraki, who made this assertion in an exclusive interview he granted the NTA, therefore advised that stakeholders in the political process must endeavor to consciously strengthen the legislature as an institution also that we've done. When you look at all these uh, different legislation, you begin to say that definitely we, we, will have, we will have made an impact, not only for today, we will have made an impact in defining the Nigeria of tomorrow. The difference between democracy and dictatorship is parliament. Uh, and that's why I tell people that um, even if you don't like Bukola Saraki, let us separate me from the institution. We must strengthen this institution. Um, four years, I'm gone. Somebody else will be there. But those institutions are important to strengthen our democracy. If you have a weak parliament, you have a weak democracy. Details of the special interview with Nigeria Senate President Abubakar Bukola Saraki will be broadcast at 11 p.m later tonight. All NTA stations are advised to remain with the network service for that program. Now, you can watch this news live on online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. And up ahead on the news tonight, the need for strong moral and professional ethos in the legal profession, plus anti-piracy committee inaugurated. Stay with us. your old SIM and we'll give you 6,000 Naira airtime. Also enjoy eight times bonus on every e-top up recharge. The largest data network, Glow Unlimited. Hey, now who they here? My name now Mr. Shortcut. I demand my money. Now cheap, cheap one, I they buy. Than that, we sign. Now don't buy cheap one. <laughs> hey, now who can keep one for my yard? I cheap building material where we take build my office. I did say I deserve money. Office building collapse. And fire burn my house. Hey, hey. You don't see what happened to Mr. Shortcut? Well, Standards Organization of Nigeria, S-O-N, turn ready for action and say enough of pain, loss and wastage. And if you see product where no day correct, call the S-O-N office when near you. Or S-O-N app desk. Standards Organization of Nigeria. Improving life through standards. 
Bros, I mean, I define correct words. Huh? See the shop for that side. Mm. Ati, 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 I will look that. Where be correct words? Uh, now the shop be that, now the next one. Peter, mm -hmm. see as people, they pack, they go to the shop, go buy clothes. It don't reach like five days now. I just suspect, eh, this two day way this is where, in Waka Kuru, can I walk out? See, I go blow whistle. I go blow whistle, we came to Kuku Spray. Ah, you are whistle. Uh, come on, go first, get the matter before you blow whistle. Whistle block. Come on, come on. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, today, thank you. Uh, so, so first. Uh, you the sacrifice for this market. Mm -hmm. Why we say only your shop everybody will come? And you just want to blow whistle. See, I go blow something. This is this a little bit whistle blowing matter. Now, empty and goodie bag. Would it be empty and goodie bag? With empty and goodie bag, if you carry your market, enter another level, whether not for Facebook or for WhatsApp or for Twitter, for as low as 25 naira. 25 naira? Yes. Or buy five, what you like, for 50 naira. That's the 131 hash to start. So with empty and goodie bag, your business go pure. <laughs> Flooding everywhere. People rendered homeless. The impact of flooding is far-reaching. Obey the provisions of the National Environmental Regulations on flooding, erosion, and sanitation. Don't dump refuse in drains. Don't build on waterways. Otherwise, when the rains come, the effect could be disastrous. Nesria, ensuring a cleaner and healthier environment for all Nigerians. Correct information about different kind of family planning method. Then they safe and they work well. Up. You and your partner feel plan when and I like to bump the king. Turn that well. Make you yarn with your partner. Make them sabi say you support modern family planning. Oh yeah, wakago color be the better one. We go fit your body today. Cause say we get one way correct for you and your partner. Sabi the correct thing way family planning they do. Follow talk, talk family planning with, with your, your partner. partner. Wakago do family planning. Get it together. Get it together. Join and plan your family for tomorrow way better. Now the Federal Ministry of Health they bring on this get it together to you. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. The Director General and Management of the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, hereby invites Chief Executive Officers and Heads of Engineering of all radio stations in Nigeria to a meeting to discuss FM radio transmitter power and coverage area in Nigeria. Date, Wednesday, 2nd August 2017. Time, 11 a.m. prompt. Venue, Ikeja Sheraton Hotel, Lagos, Nigeria. All stakeholders are hereby enjoined to attend this important meeting where very critical decisions will be taken. NBC, your right to quality broadcasting. Management announcer. You are watching Network News on the network service of the NTA. A former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Chief Kanu Agabi, has spoken about the need for those going into the legal profession to be guided by the strong moral and professional ethos for the society to have the desired impact of the profession. He was speaking at a career development lecture held at the Nigerian Law School headquarters in Abuja. Femi Okewo was there. Career guidance are generally seen as guides to picking professions. But at the Nigerian Law School, all students are ready into law. 
So what is there to guide? A lot, all the resource persons at the lecture say. Don't look for shortcuts. It often turns out to be very long. Don't look for the easy way out. What comes easy goes easy. For instance, Chief Kanu Agabi says one of the problems of the legal profession in Nigeria today is the perception that the profession is based on dishonesty, where lawyers twist the law only for the sake of their clients. To clean this up, he calls on all in the profession to be more morally and ethically conscious. The most difficult of the professions is law, and uh, you need guidance all the way. And the best lawyers are those who are listening to, to others. It's about responsibility and duty. You, you need to work hard to be the best. There are also diverse areas of law practice, and those who are yet to be in the field are advised to be passionate about whichever field they go into. A lot of students were impressed. A lot of female students who he thought to said they didn't know what to do after they are called to the bar because they thought the only thing they could do with a law degree is litigation. This career development program is meant to instill in the law students that just picking law as a career is not sufficient. But the key thing society is interested in is what you do with the law as a career. From the Nigerian Law School headquarters, Buari Abuja, Femi Okewu, NT News. Now in a similar uh, issue, as legal matters concerning the telecommunication industry continue to escalate in our law courts, the Nigerian Communications Commission organized a workshop for judges on the legal issues in the industry to enable them competently dispense justice in that sector. Ali Etikul reports on that. The proliferation of internet and the decreasing cost of technology has no doubt provided millions of users access to the internet and other digitalization services, thereby affecting our social and working life, communication, privacy, property and fundamental rights. Alongside all the positive aspects of this development, our society is facing increasing cybercrime, issues concerning data protection, identity theft, privacy of individuals and businesses. Some of these issues end up in the courtroom. It is against this backdrop that the Nigerian Communications Commission, in collaboration with the National Judicial Institute, is sensitizing judges from across the country on trends in the telecommunication industry to ensure that the judiciary is able to navigate legal issues presented for adjudication. The continuous engagement with the judiciary will help to uh, advance our laws in this area um, alongside global best practices to put Nigeria at par with other countries. We benefit a lot from how they operate. You must know how they operate before you can go into their matters. And the uh, act is very important because that is what judges will interpret in the courts. We are actually looking at reviewing our laws, coming up with a legal framework to handle issue of child online protection. The workshop will also include a tour to network operating centers to give the judges first-hand knowledge on how the centers manages the risk of cyber threats in the country. Ali Utukur, NTA News. The Senate is to encourage collective enactment of appropriate legislation by northern states and tackle the Almajari phenomenon. Senate President Bukola Saraki said this could be done through modification and domestication of the Child Rights Act passed by the National Assembly. National Assembly correspondent Waziri Zeyanu reports that the Senate President said this when the National Conference Committee on All Almajari Phenomenon in Nigeria visited him in Abuja. Current demographic estimates have put the number of Almajaris in northern Nigeria at about 10 million, with a couple of states individually coming up with various formula to curb the minas. Senate President pledged National Assembly's collaboration in fashioning out a roadmap that will strengthen steps taken by states. To see how we can also as we say, integrate formal education into the major system or whatever else that needs to be done in ensuring that this, the 10 million that we have, that how do we bring them back in and give them the opportunity to, to have access to, to proper education. 
Executive Secretary, Center for Crisis and Communication. Yusuf Anna said they were at the National Assembly to commend the lawmakers for making youth development and education national priority. It is common knowledge that the Boko Haram terror group found willing reservoir from some of these poor and marginalized. Meanwhile, Deputy Senate President Ike Ikore Madu has expressed optimism that sections of the proposed amendment of the 1999 constitution rejected by the National Assembly could still meet the constitutional threshold when revisited. Senator Ikoremadu stated this during a consultative meeting on the Southeast Infrastructural Development with the delegation of a United Kingdom-based development agency, Perl. He commended his colleagues for approving about 95% of the recommendations presented by his committee. Let me use the opportunity to reassure not just Nigerians but our development partners that we are sensitive to the feelings of our people. And there are some of those issues that concerns them for which they are really concerned worried about, you know, we're going to likely revisit them. Team leader of Pearl, Dr. Adia Ode, commended the National Assembly for voting in favor of autonomy for local governments and state houses of assembly. In the meantime, the presidency has praised the National Assembly for the transparent constitutionality, procedural compliance, and engagement of the people in the constitutional development. Senior Special Assistant to President Muhammad Buhari or National Assembly Matter Senate, Senator Itai Enang, gave the commendation while speaking to the Senate press call. I'm urging Nigerians who have any reservation about what ought to be or what ought to have passed or what ought not to have passed to wait that they have and know that they have the downstream, that is the House of Assembly, you know, to also fight at. Before proceeding or recess, the National Assembly amended some sections of the Constitution. From the National Assembly, Wazir Zayanu, NT. In line with the federal government's resolve to protect the creative industry from activities of pirates, an anti-piracy committee has been inaugurated by the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed. The committee is mandated to work out modalities that will be used in fighting piracy in Nigeria. Anthony Fawson reports. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed, while inaugurating the Anti-Piracy Committee, restated the federal government's determination to create the enabling environment for those in the industry to benefit fully from their talent as well as attract investment to the sector. The way piracy is today, if it's not tamed to become a monster that will destroy the entire creative industry, it's because they are so comfortable and they believe they are invincible. The minister, however, appeals to members of the committee to ensure that no stone is left unturned in their quest for ways of eliminating pirates from running the sector. In particular, we must ensure that this enforcement you know, activities, whatever form is going to take, must be regular, must be sustained. We have a responsibility or a stake here and that is why the IG decided to send the DIG operations and myself. The DIG operations controls the men that you will need for your enforcement while I take part or control the men that will be used in the investigation and prosecution of these cases. In another development, the Information and Culture Minister has assured that no amount of pressure mounted or campaign of calumny embarked upon will deter the determination of the present administration in fighting piracy in the country. The minister stated this when he granted audience to members of the Music Producers and Marketers Association of Nigeria. He told them that a committee to come up with modalities of combating piracy has been inaugurated with the full backing of the Inspector General of Police. We are committed to our goal. Piracy is worse than arm robbery because we have succeeded in bringing to the front burner the creative industry in Nigeria. He expressed satisfaction that the campaign against piracy is gaining momentum and therefore it must be sustained. President of the association, Sharon Joshua Wilson, after reeling out the association's demand to the minister, said it is sharing news to know that a committee has been inaugurated to work at modalities on how to contain piracy. The minister was later presented with a certificate as grand patron of the association. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. 
The presidency has commended the message of the president of Nigeria Association of uh, Association of Christian Station of Nigeria, Khan, Reverend Samson Supo Ayokunle, expressing joy at the news of President Muhammadu Buhari's recovery from illness. A statement by Garaba Shehu, Senior Special Assistant Media and Publicity to President Buhari, describes the message as touching and thoughtful that such goodwill from respected religious bodies like Khan meant so much at a time when some people with ill intentions were struggling to divide the country along religious lines. The statement further notes that the presidency looks forward to more collaborations with Khan to ensure that Nigerians of all ethnic and religious groups benefit from the policies of the Buhari administration, which are aimed at improving the welfare of all the citizenry. Now, the first batch of 468 intending pilgrims from the FCT arrived in Medina, Saudi Arabia. They were received on arrival by the representative of the Nigerian ambassador in Riyadh, Mahud Danjuma, the Consul General Jeddah, Secretary to Hajj Commission, and other officials. A report by Chief Information Officer of the Commission, Adamu Hassan Abdullahi, says the 460 pilgrims, 20 officials from the National Hajj Commission, arrived safely and profiled without inconvenience. Addressing the pilgrims, Ambassador Mahu Danjuma advised them to be the, of good behavior and avoid any act that will pitch them against the law. Nigeria's Council General Jeddah warned the pilgrims against wandering aimlessly without their documents and also advised against uh, uh, frivolities. Our Lagos Network Center is where we go next, and let's join Ademola Adioye for more reports. Hello, Ademola. Thank you, Kirian. Good evening and warm welcome to Lagos. The Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibe Kachuku, has charged key players in the oil and gas industry to develop a strategy that will help reduce the current high level of production costs in the sector. He stated this at a forum in Lagos. Rotimi Oluagbemi compiled this report. The minister highlighted some of the challenges facing the oil and gas industry in Nigeria, called for urgent transformation of the sector, given the fact that investments are disappearing, coupled with challenges of infrastructural gap in the sector. Ibe Kachuku, who commended the diversification of the economy embarked upon by the federal government, however, emphasized the need to work to achieve success in the oil and gas industry to boost the diversification program in the sector. Going on, people are moving away from oil. The, the lifespan of oil, from whatever calculations you do, is, is probably within 25 and 30 year period. That's what it is. Everybody's moving away. Electric cars are taking over. Environmentally fr fr um, friendly power sources of supply are taking over. Solar systems are kicking in. So very soon, what will happen really is that even the funds to be able to address your aerial exploration will become not available because funds follow markets. They follow returns. And if returns in oil continue to sag the way they have sagged over the last two, three years, there will be no future for oil. The minister also commended the anti-corruption crusade of the Buhari's administration and said it will go a long way towards sanitizing the oil and gas industry. A new executive council of the Lagos Western and Northern Areas Territories of the Apostolic Church of Nigeria has been inaugurated in Lagos. The council will pilot the affairs of the church in line with the teaching of Jesus Christ and in service of humanity. Joy Ken Abapoya reports that the induction ceremony took place in Lagos with members of the church in attendance. It was celebration galore at the Apostolic Church Nigeria as members from across the country gathered to witness the induction of new principal officers of the Lagos and Western Northern areas of the church. <laughs> This is the first time in 47 years that Lorna will induct an executive council made up of a territorial chairman and national vice president, vice chairman, administrative secretary, and finance secretary. 
The officiating minister and the national president of the church enjoined the newly inducted executive to exhibit traits exemplified by Christ and carry the gospel to the world. All fragments and divisions and splitters, uh, I, I, give them, I call on them to come back to the fold so that we can work together. They have to obey God, obey the authority and come back to faithfulness with God. Saddled with a new mantle of leadership, the principal officers pledged to serve God without compromise and lead in accordance with the governing rules of the church. The Lagos and Western Northern Areas Territory of the Apostolic Church Nigeria is made up of 94 areas, 619 districts, over 3,000 assemblies, and seven missionary fields. In Lagos, Joy Ken Abakuya, NTN News. You're still watching NTA Network News. We now take a break for some messages, after which the news returns shortly. Stay with us. Sometimes in life, the advantage you need is the advantage you already have. With the fastest speeds at the best prices and nationwide coverage, Glow 4G LTE is the ultimate advantage. G LTE from Glow, you always win. You can use my Glow 4G LTE. Just do this. Glow 4G LTE. Wow. Yes. Don't worry, I'm going to connect you to my hotspot. <laughs> <laughs> These data plans are available to all new customers and existing customers who renew their plans. Dial star triple seven hash. Welcome to the new speed of life. Chavita, burst of refreshment. House of Chi. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now through our technology. LG OLED TV. Close Up has active zinc mouthwash to clean the deep corners of your mouth. And micro shine crystals. Stay closer for longer with 12 hours of fresh breath and a beautiful white smile. Close Up. Nigeria's number one selling toothpaste. Achievers always believe in 100%. Breakfast isn't complete without Chavita 100% fruit juice. Made from real natural fruits with no added sugar. So to be at your best, start every day the Chavita 100% way. With 100% quality. 100% commitment, 100% goodness, 100% achievement. Start your day the Shavita 100% way. Reorganized, trained, and fully equipped, we are the new improved Nigeria Police Force. We fight crime, we bust syndicates, whatever the crime. Wherever the hideout, the Nigeria Police Force will get you busted. Stop kidnapping, armed robbery, murder, pipeline vandalism and other criminal activities. Be productive, be security conscious, join the police force to secure your life and property. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force, Force Public Relations Department. <laughs> 
You're welcome back. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, will offer 229.1 billion naira worth of bills in its biweekly treasury bills auction. Plus, the governor of the CBN gives clarification on the Apex Bank's intervention in the Tisalat crisis. Let's join Shikyola Ibinaye for these and more business news. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, will this week conduct its bi-weekly treasury bills auction with total offer of 229.1 billion naira to offset maturing bills and to keep financial system liquidity tight. Afrinvest West Africa Limited had stated in our report that despite repeated open market operation auctions, many market rates eased last week against the backdrop of an open market repayment and improved system liquidity. Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, says the intervention of the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, in the Atisalite crisis was to avert a degeneration of the situation to a total collapse. He also said that the parties are happy that the intervention yielded positive results. Speaking on the issue, Governor Imefele said that with the prompt intervention of the government agencies, the telecommunications company did not lose any revenue nor its subscribers base, while the staff also retained their jobs. The activities and the, the attempt by, by some creditors was going to lead to a dismemberment of that company and we thought that we could not allow 20 million subscribers to be running Helter Skelter without services and that we could not allow 4,000 or more staff of this company to just run in this array because something wrong had happened. He said the constitution of an interim board was a temporary measure which is not expected to last for more than 180 days pending the taking over by new investors and that already there is a surge of investors willing to take over the company. The telecommunications company, which is the fourth largest operator in the country, is now known as Naimobile. The Director General, National Commission for Museum and Monument, Yusuf Abdallah, says it is high time tourism is given good consideration in the nation's quest to diversify her economy, calling for improved funding to develop the capacity of museums across the nation as practiced in other parts of the world. The fact that the Daba is there, the Fushin Festival is there, that the museums and heritage sites are there, will make people from around the world to visit Nigeria. And when they do, they spend their money. And that is what we will now have to. Uh, these are the contributions that will improve the GDP and so on. We now take a quick look at closing figures of stocks traded at the Nigerian Stock Exchange this Monday. For now on Business News, I am Shikeola Ikenaye. Network News will continue. Uh, many thanks, uh, Shikeola. Now let's go over to Joss for more reports. Mariam is our guide. Hello, Mariam. You're welcome to Joss. Participants of the Army War College of Nigeria on study tour of the headquarters to Operation Safe Heaven in Jos say much can be achieved in safeguarding the country's territorial integrity through interagency cooperation. Caleb Gochin has details. Leader of the team and commandant, Army War College Abuja, Major General Alani Okunela, said the study and understanding of the relationship between security agencies in fighting crime and criminality is important in today's contemporary world. He said the participants are at the Operation Safe Heaven to have first-hand information about happenings within its area of jurisdiction, given the fact that the organization has functioned successfully as a multi-agency body. We have chosen the operation as a case study that will bring our participants to see how the 
uh, agencies that are operating under the umbrella of the operation are cooperating and how they are being coordinated. Commander Operation Safe Heaven, Major General Rogers Nicholas, underscored the importance of the tour in the face of security challenges in the country and urged the participants to take full advantage of what they learn to improve on their profession. With better understanding, better training, and um, good leadership at the top, we can work successfully as a team to achieve success in whatever we are doing. The team is made up of 35 senior officers drawn from the military and the police. In Jules, Caleb Gochien, NTN News. To meet the demand of small and medium scale agriculture markets, participants at the training of graduate unemployment youths and women support guys have been advised to put what they have learned into practice for maximum benefit. This came to the fore at the closing ceremony of GUYS, organized by FEDERMA 3 Additional Finance, in collaboration with the Federal College of Forestry. Kim Gotts brings us the report. Training of graduate unemployed youths and women support, GUYS is a World Bank-assisted project aimed towards training youths in agricultural techniques to be self-employed and boost the economic base of the state. State Project Coordinator for the Mathri Additional Finance, Gideon Dandam, commended the resource persons for impacting knowledge on the youths, saying that the training will hopefully address unemployment. So our focus is to see how we can be able to increase their income and then make them uh, sustainable on their own. Then uh, to also ensure that this country, this state, is able to stand on its feet in terms of uh, crop production, livestock, and processing. Acting provost. Federal College of Forestry, Victoria Joshua, said for the participants to drive maximum benefit from the training, they should practice the techniques they have acquired. Participants speak on the training. I intend to venture into piggery production because of the vast knowledge and it's in line with my profession. To make an impact in our society and then maybe be able to create more job opportunity for others. The program, guys, will be supervised by the World Bank and for the Matri additional finance. In Jos, Kim Gotts, NTA News. That's it on our package. Back to you, Kirian, for what's left of the news. Mariam. Now, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Meliguri, Professor Ibrahim Njodi, says the institution, in collaboration with the NNPC, will continue with the search for commercial hydrocarbon deposits in the Chad Basin, despite the recent insurgent attack on the exploration team. Professor Njodi said this while receiving a delegation from the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Dr. Ibe Kachiku, and the NNPC, led by Seydou Mohammed, Chief Operating Officer officer in charge of gas and power unit in the corporation. The vice chancellor who described the attack as cruel noted that the 12 years of partnership with NMPC for exploration in the basin must go on. There can be no time in history that the history of Nigeria will be complete without mentioning this very high sacrifice of our staff. When losses like this happen, under this circumstance, we cannot leave our partners alone. But definitely on the two sides, on both the families of the deceased, and also to see how we can recushion some of the losses we have experienced. The delegation was also at the government house, Meduguri, where they were received by the deputy governor of the state, Usman Dukwa, who urged NMPC not to be distracted by the attack. The team also visited the theater command headquarters of Operation La Lafia Dole uh, for formal presentation of condolence letter from the Minister of Petroleum Resources. Brigadier General Stevenson Labaji, who stood in for the theater commander, expressed the military's determination to perform their statutory duty in the Chad Basin and beyond. Now let's join Ogochukuka in Benin for their contribution uh, from that zone. Hello, Ogochukuka. Okirian. Thank you for joining us in Benin. The Federal Minister of Environment, in collaboration with World Bank, have commenced 
They're reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation program in all those states with the handing over of information communication technology and office equipment to the state government. The governor, Oluwaro Timiakeridolu, said the development of Red Plus is timely in boosting forest carbon stock. Doris Olumoko has details. The Red Plus program is an initiative by the United Nations to bring to bear the challenges of climate change and need assessment to the process of inventory for forest reference emission level. It transcends deforestation and forest degradation and encompasses the roles of conservation, sustainable management of forests, and enhancement of forest carbon stocks. We need to partner, to partner with you in developing the economic measures of our state for the benefit of all our stakeholders. Ondo State Governor Mr. Uluaro Timi Akredelu said the state has adopted the cardinal principles of Red Plus as a mechanism to address climate change and conserve the forests. Especially completion of projects which will ease the burden of other development quality and experience in the rural areas. Red Plus is committed to reducing emission in which the forest sector is critical to its realization. In Akure, Doris Ulumoko, NTN News. Abandoned vehicles along roads and streets in Benin Metropolis are to be towed and evacuated to government dump sites with effect from Friday the 4th of August. The action is in line with the state government's drive to keep the state clean and attractive. Good luck in any reports. Mr. Konofua led members of the tax force to Plymouth, Akenzwa, and Ekewa roads to identify vehicles abandoned by their owners, thereby obstructing free flow of traffic and in some cases serves as refuge dumps and hide out for hoodlums. We are clearing them and we are going to ensure that those the owners face the appropriate sanctions. Okay. The vehicle may be dismantled and sold out as scrap to recover the cost of uh, towing and evacuation. Mr. Akunofua said the Obaseki led administration is committed to making the state attractive and will do everything possible in realizing that dream. He called on car dealers who display their vehicles along the road to remove them while those in the habit of abandoning their vehicles to obey the state government's directives. Some residents commended the state government's initiative and called for its sustenance. They could serve as a, a security threat. But it's not good. Came like I easily go that place and hide in the night. The state government embarked on the clean up exercise about three months ago. In Benin, I am good luck in INE. NT News. And that's it from here. Kiran is back to you. Thank you, Gochiku. Aggrieved members of the All Progressive Congress APC in Kaduna State, led by Senator Shehu Sani, representing Kaduna Central, have petitioned the National Secretariat of the party over what they described as a truncated process of local government ad hoc delegate elections held in the state over the weekend. National Chairman of the party, Chief John Odige Oyegu, who received the petition behind closed doors, promised to look into the issue. And uh, just ahead is a bit on the foreign scene and a look at the sports circuit. Do stay with us. Perspectives on local government autonomy. This is our focus on NTA Tuesday Live this week. NTA Tuesday Live. Incisive, informative and educating. Join us. With my best friends indulging my tea exotic taste of paradise, irresistible. Everywhere I go, tea exotic. Nothing makes my drink more than when the mixer is delightful. Tea exotic, and after a long day, I want to relax with the taste of my tea exotic. Yeah, sink in and get lost. Taste of relaxation, too good not to share. Taste of perfection. Oh, say I love the taste of G exotic. I love the taste of G exotic. I love the taste of G exotic. Nothing like the taste of my G exotic. I love the taste of G exotic. Nothing like the taste of my G exotic. Oh, I love. 
the taste. Chi exotic nectar. I love the taste. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service, NAVDAC as an agency is indeed doing so much to protect the health of our nation. I urge everyone to support NAPDAC in reading the country of fake drugs and unwholesome products. Let us support NAPDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAPDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. <laughs> Obigali Gwoke now brings us developing stories across the globe. On this segment, we'll begin with stories trending in African region. A fight between Al-Shabaab militants and some